I'm Richie Farina and I'm the chef de cuisine here at Moto. And I'm Ben Roach, I'm the pastry chef. And collectively we came up with the idea for a new menu. So we present to you a menu with no words. So you have a couple different bites here. Each bite has a flavor profile that describes its corresponding course. So you have savory and you also have... The sweets. We're also gonna have the desserts on your menu. So each dessert is represented here in a more savory version so that it doesn't throw off the balance of the entire menu itself. And another thing that we wanted to do for this particular menu is highlight a lot of the seasonal produce that's available to us right now. So not only are we utilizing our foraging friends, but also some of the local farms around the area. So we think this is a very nice, playful way to start your meal off. You kind of guess what you're going to get throughout the rest of the meal. So we're going to start you off with something that's well, a little light, raw, and then progress from there. Enjoy. So for this course, we give a traditional dim sum presentation. We just tweak it a little bit. So in the top layer of the steamer basket, you have a steam bun. In the bottom layer, you have a live sea scallop and pickled jicama dumpling, some braised kombu, kompachi, which is seasoned with lime and ginger aioli, served on top of an oyster leaf, which is actually garnished with a mustard green harvested from our own vertical garden. In the bottom of the bowl, we have some green tea. We add some liquid nitrogen to everything, steam the whole thing, present it to you, and then when you're done eating everything, the basket's removed, you drink your tea, and move on to your next course. So this course you have crudite. We take the traditional flavors of crudite and put our own little spin on it. We like to use seasonal, local, and very colorful ingredients on this one. The main focus is gonna be on the cauliflower panna cotta and the puff pasta, which is then flavored with ranch powder. The other main flavors of the dish include carrots, broccoli, celery, and radish. We then garnish it with micro broccoli tops and carrot tops, which are also harvested from our vertical garden. So deconstruction is old, reconstruction is what's new. That's what we have here, reconstructed corn. Focusing on corn in three different ways. We're also going to use some traditional Mexican equipment, just in a new way. Our tortilla press, we're actually going to freeze in liquid nitrogen and repress a tortilla made from tortilla puree and top it off with some skate fries. Our mocha gente, we're going to grind all the spices for our reconstructed corn cob. The cob itself is made from popcorn ice cream. Freeze-dried corn kernels are placed on the outside, individually with tweezers, torched, and then the whole thing is then rolled all the spices ground up in the mocha gente. Finishing off the dish, we have a popcorn mousse, freeze-dried corn crust, purple Peruvian potato chip, an edible popcorn shoot, and bay leaf gel. So for this course, I wanted to showcase one of my favorite seasonal ingredients, soft shell crab. It is tempura fried and resting on a bed of kelp. We're using the kelp to bring the ocean smell to this dish. It is served alongside onion and scallion purees, pickled shallots, garlic chips, a dry aioli powder, and the whole dish is garnished with an assortment of microgreens harvested from our very own vertical garden. So for your next course here, you have the Zen Garden Cheese Plate. You want to be a piece when you eat this. So at the bottom of the garden, there's a freeze-dried peach puree. It's then topped with a powder of toasted almond sand. The cheeses featured here are an Explorator cheese and Camembert cheese, which are each rolled in a mixture of cocoa powder and black cocoa replacer. There's also an apple and bay leaf gel on top, some freeze-dried shallots, China rose shoots grown out of the garden, and you get a little tiny rake if you want to play in the sandbox. This is a very relaxing version of a cheese course. At all. For this course, we have red wine salad. Our red wine salad is taking all the flavors and aromas that are found in this wine and presenting them in an edible form. We'll start off first with the place setting. You have different herbs and spices that are found in the wine, such as pine, cloves, baking spices, wood chips. Those are then brulee to release all those aromas. All the flavors are then on the plate. We'll start off first with a smoked beet puree. Top that off with some petite mash and tarragon. We have bacon for smokiness. The fruit we're using are dates and blackberries, truffle for earth. We then take all those flavors, puree them, and centrifuge them to make your vinaigrette. So we're presenting you what looks like a very light dish that has a lot of heavy flavor. Forest Foraging 2.0. There's so much stuff to play around with this time of year, so we put it all in one dish. Starting off on the stick first, we have a ramp top puree along with a mushroom puree, a freeze-dried pea and ramp top moss, Crones on there to look like little bugs. Golden and green pea tendrils topped off with lemon juice to look like dew in the morning. The ramp bulb, which we pickle. Fiddlehead ferns, 
and the highlight of the dish would be the locally harvested morel mushrooms. So all these great ingredients on one dish really highlights our goal here at Moto to stay as seasonal as possible. Next up, you have cassoulet on a stick. We've taken a big bowl of rock and roll and turned it into a one biter. So on the rosemary skewer itself, we have carrots, rutabaga, pork sausage, and duck confit. The whole thing is dipped in a white bean gel, coated in herb breadcrumbs, and served with grilled bread and a bone marrow butter. This is your spring lamb course. The main idea behind this dish is to focus on the butchering skills of breaking down a whole animal. Now every butcher relies on a good cleaver. It's a tool they use every day. Well here, we're gonna use it as a plate. So first off, we'll start with some roasted eggplant puree. Our first cut we're gonna focus on is a lamb loin carpaccio with a fresh chickpea hummus and a fava bean leaf. We also have a roasted leg of lamb with sauteed fresh chickpeas, braised fennel bulb with a lamb neck sausage and micro fennel, an olive tapenade with a smoked and rolled lamb belly, braised artichokes with a confit lamb shoulder and micro oregano, a lamb pate, which incorporates all cuts of the lamb, a little bit of lamb jus, and we've really recreated a whole butcher scene here. This dish is an excellent example of how we highlight seasonal products here at the restaurant. This is a great way to cap off your savories and move right along into your desserts. After the savory courses are done, we're gonna move into desserts, but we're gonna go backwards. We're gonna start with coffee service. So for the first dessert, it looks like you're getting a cup of black coffee, some sugar cubes, and a little creamer full of froth milk. What's actually inside of the coffee cup is pumpkin seed cake, sugared pumpkin seeds, pumpkin seed ice cream, candied lemon peel puree, burnt cinnamon ice cream, banana mint, roasted bananas, and then topped off with a frozen disc of espresso flavored whipped cream. The whole thing gets glazed with a very light coffee gel. On the side of the cup are the sugar cubes, which are made from coconut. In the metal creamer on the side of the plate is a frothed milk flavored with vanilla and tonka bean. Once you've mixed all these elements together, the coffee flavor is definitely there, but from the lemon, the mint, the banana, and the coconut, it's a very unique coffee experience. With this next piece, we really want to illustrate the beauty of bourbon. It's served on a slat from a bourbon barrel, and the barrel gives off this amazing whiskey aroma. On one side, we have edible cocktails, classic bourbon cocktails, mint julep, whiskey and ginger, old fashioned and whiskey sour. So this piece is served with a rocks glass and a flask. The flask is filled with a mixture that I make from caramelized sugar, roasted corn, and bourbon barrel chips, almost like a tea. So the idea is that you'll pour from the flask into the glass and drink that while you're eating these bites. All together, this is really a bourbon experience unlike any other. This dish is the explosion and it's a fun way for us to showcase some of the foraging skills we use here. A few of the elements on the plate I actually pick up on my way into the restaurant every day. So right now I'm using some cat mint, cat mint flowers, and also some lilacs, which lend this really beautiful perfumey floral quality to the whole dish. Some of the other elements to the dish are beets, rhubarb, yogurt, and toasted almonds. What may appear a very simple presentation in the beginning becomes explosive by dropping what looks like a stick of dynamite directly onto the plate, which then explodes into three different colored liquids, each liquid being a combination of a fruit and a flower, and those liquids then acting as a sauce for the dessert. This is really just a fun, colorful approach to showcase some of the nice fruits, vegetables, and flowers that are blooming this time of the year. A car at all. This is a dish that's presented in two parts, one of them edible and one of them purely aromatic. We're gonna focus on three elements, chocolate, smoke, and leather. For the edible portion, we have dark chocolate, raisins, smoked chocolate cookies, caramel, very earthy, very strong flavors. For the aromatic portion, we have this glass dome with a leather glove inside of it. Once we lift up the dome, you're gonna get this waft of vanilla smoke. And then you're actually gonna pick up this leather glove and smell it. And that's a really nice accompaniment to the smoky chocolate elements in the dish. Just when you thought you were at the end of the meal and it's all over, there's more. So this is our after dinner menu, similar to what you might call an after dinner mint. The menu itself is printed onto a marshmallow flavored with jasmine. And then we freeze that in liquid nitrogen at the table and lay it on top of what I like to call a fruit salad. The fruit salad consists of two layers, the first layer being the salad greens, 
and underneath a mixture of fruits corresponding with each herb. For example, pineapple with pineapple mint, apples with apple mint. Once the menu is set on top and shattered, it will act as a crouton for your fruit salad. This is just a really nice, light, refreshing way to end the new seasonal menu at Moto. Come at all.